Mm. Good evening. Good evening, my good people. Those of you in Liberia, I want to say good evening to you. Those of you in the U.S., I want to say good afternoon. In Europe, good, good evening as well. Uh, I'm glad to be here for a few minutes just to bring you up to date with where we are, our plans, our efforts. Um, we've got everything is on course for tomorrow. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful show of force by the Liberian people. A show of dissatisfaction in a peaceable fashion. Uh, it's going to be about the the issues and nothing but the issues. December 30th has been around. We've been talking about this for months and it's finally here. And tomorrow is the day. George, we have had ample time to address our concerns, to cause this peaceful assembly to be put off or even canceled. But Mr. President refused to do any of those things. And as such, we cannot sit by and allow our country to continue to go down the drain. Now, again, if some of you are wondering, why again are we protesting? Why are we assembling? The reasons are not partisan. They are not political. They border on bread and butter issues. They border on the economic and social welfare of the people. They border on political rights of all Liberians. Democratic rights guaranteed by our constitution. Are you satisfied with the way our country is being run? When was the last time you felt happy in this man's two-year-old government? When was the last time you really spent money and didn't worry about where and, and how you were spending it? When was the last time you were able to not worry about paying your children's tuition? When was the last time? These are the issues that matter. These are the reasons for which we are assembling to protest. It is not about Henry Costa. It is not about any political leader. It is about you. And we need to send that message. Tomorrow, I look forward to locking arms with you and locking arms with Mo Ali, with Darius Delon, and tons of other people. Yeke Koluba, Jeremiah Wapo, Sanji Stepto, and the tens of thousands of Liberians out there whose names I do not know, but whose love of country has been demonstrated and has convinced me that there are more good people in this country than bad. And when the good people hold together, Liberia's future is assured. I have confidence that we together can redeem this country. And we can begin to do that by objecting, by rejecting, by standing up against what we know is wrong. Are you happy? That when you struggle and you make a little bit of money and you put some of that money away in the bank for rainy days so that when things get tough and then you go to the bank to try to draw on your account and you can't get your own money. I have heard stories of people not being able to draw their own money from their own bank accounts. And, uh, and which has led to people dying. I heard this particular story that this woman took her daughter to the hospital. And you know how the hospitals are, yeah? 
you know, the precondition, you got to pay that fee, the admission fee before your sick loved one or relative is admitted. And that woman went to a local bank to try to draw 20,000 Liberian dollars, a paltry 20,000 Liberian dollars, but she couldn't get the money. And I'm told the hospital did not make any exception. They did not bend their rule and her daughter died. I know of people who have gone to local banks to try to draw their own money and they have collapsed, literally collapsed of the pressure. I know of people and I have heard of people who are sitting at home grieving in their hearts that they cannot send their children to school this semester and somehow they're hopeful that somehow something will happen. That somehow they will be able to send their children to school for the next semester. But I tell them this. Hope, as good a thing it is, is not enough. You must stand up to send this man a message. I am told George Weir went to church today. To his church. Georgia Patton United Methodist Church. Located in Johansson. In Monrovia, his pastor, Reverend Brown, he said, Reverend Brown preached and said, as the leader of the country, he knowing the president was in the congregation, the Reverend was sending a clear subliminal message, not even subliminal, it was a very clear message, implicit, explicit message to the president. And the Reverend said, Reverend Brown said in the church today, in his sermon, he said, when you are the leader of the country, you are like the father of the country. And when some of your citizens who are like your children are not happy, it is your job as a father to open your arms and embrace them and sit down with them and hear them out. And I am told that President Weir, when the time came for him to speak, he said to the Reverend, you know, the man is such that he is so petty that nothing passes him by without responding or retorting and he said to the good reverend brown he said reverend brown i am the president of the country i have the mandate and i will defend the constitution of the country that is what george we and they say as he spoke the whole congregation felt silent silence in disapproval Silence and murmuring fell upon the congregation at Georgia Patton United Methodist Church today when George Weir demonstrated his arrogance, his unrequited, unwavering arrogance that I am the father of the nation. And I was elected to defend the Constitution. Do you know what it means to defend the Constitution? When you bribe legislators to remove a sitting associate justice because you didn't like his opinion rendered during the elections. When you nominate commission without confirmation, an ambassador to our most important diplomatic mission, an outright violation of constitutional of the constitutional powers of the, the Liberian Senate. Is that the constitution you elected to uphold? So my friends, as I said to you last night in our little message, you have to take a side. What, where do you stand? Are you the sunshine pat pat patriot of which <laughs> Thomas Paine wrote? The patriot who is only a patriot when things are okay? But what kind of patriot are you? Or are you the ring or shine patriot? What kind of patriot are you? That is a question that I'm asking you. I know what kind of patriot I am. I am the patriot who stands for his country, for his country come what may, rain or shine. And we have demonstrated that enough. And I hope many of you out there have been inspired motivated many of you out there i hope have seen that we're not doing this for ourselves it is about the country today george we struggles to stop a protest why because he is so vainglorious he is so used to being praised and worshipped
And he cannot just accept that people would protest against them. The great George Manning, we are. How dare Mo Ali try to protest against me? How dare Henry Costa try to protest against me? That's the Mo Ali of whom I speak. He shows up. He speaks of the devil. And here he comes. So it hurts him. It pricks his pride and his ego. Who are they? That's why he speaks of, I have demanded. Mr. President, it is true. You have demanded. But you see, they say all power is inherent in the people. So my friends, what kind of a patriot are you? Mo Ali, are you the ring or sign patriot? If the ring shines, you still love your country. If the sun shines, you still love your country. Or are you the sunshine patriot? We are ring or shine patriot. We love our country. And so that is why we will march into history tomorrow. And we will send a very clear message to the world. Today we did our press conference. We have Al Jazeera. We have writers. We have VOA. The international media is in town. And we are ready. Ready to send a message. Ready to send a message to George Weir that enough is enough. The men and women of the COP... Mo Ali, Darius Delon, Yeke Koloba, Ben Sanvi, Reverend Sanjay Scepter, Ben Tokba, Jeremiah Wapo, all, all of us, all of us, boy, you know we are, Makula, every one of us, I look forward to seeing you, we're going to march tomorrow, marching into history, our chest exposed, let George Weah kill us in front of the whole world, but we will have nothing but banners and posters and singing and chanting and demanding that he should answer to us. How can Musa Dean, the Minister of Justice, tell us in the presence of the international community that the $25 million investigation has been successfully closed? Not possible. Did he not promise that after the LAGAC audit, which exposed the foibles and the fundamental flaws that characterize the fraud and flaws that characterize the entire MAPO ex exercise? Did he not promise us that the report would be forwarded to the LACC for a forensic criminal investigation after which speedy prosecutions would be initiated? Did he not promise us that? Only we are told the report has been consummated. The report has been completed. But do you know why George Weah does not want to publish the report? Because the report indicts Samuel Tua heavily. And if the report is published, then the people will demand action. And if action is demanded, Samuel Tua would be dragged to court. And if Tua is dragged to court, most likely Weah himself might be implicated. And so you steal $25 million from a poor country such as ours? When hospitals are going without drugs and essential basic medical supplies, hand gloves, fuel to keep the lights on, to keep the light on across this country. When public school teachers are protesting and doing go slow because they can't receive their salaries in many months. When civil servants are going without salary for many, many months and you can steal millions of dollars and millions of dollars and you expect that we will sit by idly and let that slide. The $16 billion, you are prosecuting weeks, weeks in, uh, uh, Charles Sirleaf for printing, for unauthorized printing of an excess of $1.9 billion. Yes. But you're not prosecuting them for the $16 billion, how it was infused in the economy, how the, the so-called legacy notes that were supposedly withdrawn from circulation, how it was disposed of, and in fact, re-infused into the economy alongside the brand new notes that were printed, which brought us to this problem with a spiraling inflation and depreciation of the Liberian dollar against its American dollar counter counterpart. These are the gross acts of corruption and incompetence that plunged this economy into the free fall and the depreciation of the Liberian dollar, which caused the spiraling inflation, food inflation, and general inflation. And yet you're saying that you're only looking into the excess printing, the unauthorized excess printing? We're talking about bread and butter issues that affect the people's lives. 
and George Weah tells us that he will address our concerns in his State of the Nation address, State of the Nation address to be delivered on the third Monday 